One early morning, Gordon awoke with a start. He felt strange, but could not explain why. His driver, who had come to clean them before work began, reassured him. It's ditch water, he said to Gordon. It can get into your mechanical workings and make you feel sick. Gordon was satisfied with that explanation, but what was odd was that he couldn't remember falling into the ditch, even though it had recently happened. The memory was fuzzy at best. I'm exhausted from pulling the express so well, he chuckled to himself, and fell back into an uneasy sleep. He dreamt of vague images, those of a mine and of darkness below. In these images, he felt apart from himself, as if viewing the events from above. He couldn't see anything clearly, but he felt strongly that these memories didn't belong to him. Later that morning, Gordon sleepily brought his train to the junction. Thomas, who looked equally tired, greeted him with a smile. Long night? Thomas asked. Yes, I had some very strange dreams, Gordon replied. Me too! It was like we were back at the mine again. But when I awoke, I actually couldn't remember being there at all. Gordon's eyes widened. I had the same dreams. Come to think of it, I can't remember falling into the ditch, much less rescue you from the mine. What does this mean? Thomas asked. I don't know. We only just came back. I remember bringing you to the yard, just before the Queen came to the island. I remember that too, but why can't we actually remember being at the mine? The two engines decided to find out for themselves. That night, the two of them puffed up the line which led from the big station. They rounded the bends that led to the mines, but were met with the cautionary signs which read, Danger! Collapsed mine ahead! We'll have to investigate from here, said the crews. They walked past the signs and towards the collapsed mine shafts. They came back a short while later. What are you doing back so soon? Thomas asked. Nothing to see. Let's head back. Thomas and Gordon didn't believe them. You didn't even take a light with you. How could you have seen anything? Their crews insisted, but Thomas resisted. Spread through the cautionary sounds and stopped at the edge of a large, gaping pit. When he looked down inside, he shrieked. Gordon? Thomas called, tears welling in his eyes. In the pit, were two mangled engines. One looked exactly like Gordon, and the other like Thomas. Who were these engines? Gordon asked. A terrible feeling began stewing deep in his boiler. Oh, I can explain, said the familiar voice. The fat controller stood next to his car, a light in his hand. I had hoped this day would never come. But alas, here we are. These were you, he continued solemnly. What do you mean were? asked Thomas, distress in his voice. The fat controller explained. To the mine, Thomas, you didn't just fall. The mine collapsed beneath you, so 
We tried bringing Gordon, our strongest engine, to lift you out of the pulley system. But, we misjudged how hollow the shaft was below, and he too fell into the growing chasm beneath the ground. How can we be here if we're down there? Gordon asked. It's a gruesome tale, said the fat controller. We had a major scandal due to our lack of judgment, and to save face, we saved your faces. There was a talented engineer from crew who moved your identities into new shells. The engines you see below, your former selves, were prototypes. Thomas and Gordon didn't know what to say. In their confusion, they began to cry. Now that doesn't change who you are now, the Fat Controller said. You are still two of my most useful engines. We gave you a second chance. And avoided scandal, we understand, Thomas said in a derisive tone. Soon after, the two engines slunked home, buffer to buffer. Everything felt familiar and foreign at the same time. They didn't feel whole anymore knowing that part of them was rotting away in the bowels of a mine. They only hoped that one day, many years from now, these memories would come fuzzy too.